All right, welcome to this next part of the process where we're going to actually send what we have here in ZBrush into CC4 or Character Creator 4 uh, for rigging and posing. So this part of the process is probably the most exciting of this tutorial. We're going to start uh, jumping back and forth between ZBrush and Character Creator 4 uh, to see the capabilities of, you know, uh, being able to create something directly in ZBrush and, you know, from scratch and then send it to Character Creator for uh, rigging it and posing it so that's something um, I found a very, very nice solution to one of the trickiest processes inside ZBrush, which is uh, posing. So this is where we left off. Um, we have all the details on our character and we have a subdivision level. So right now, if I select the body, for example, and turn on polyframe, you'll see this is a nice topology. And we also can go to all high to display all the details in the bodysuit. And this is something that I covered in the previous video, just the detailing um, and all the bumps and all of that. So we have a high resolution mesh with all the details that has subdivision levels. So we can lo go into the low subdivision as well. I also have gone through the process of combining things by material or by um, what I think could be um, useful, which is in this case, just the head. Uh, so let me go into solo mode. So I have four subtools. I have the head, I have the hands and the boots, the suit and the suit details, right? I could have just combined the suit and the suit details as well, but I just want to leave them as two separate subtools just to um, manipulate them a little bit easier and to show you one of the cool things about the rigging process in Character Creator 4, which allows you to uh, kind of like define the soft deformations, which I think would be ideal for the body itself or like the suit, as well as some more hard surface stuff that I don't want to, um, you know, deform as much, right? So that's the idea and that's the reason why I left those separate. But altogether, the, the character is comprised of four subtools that I have in ZBrush. I also went ahead and created UVs for this character and textures inside Substance 3D Painter. And by the way, you don't have to have textures at this point. I like to have textures done before I go into the posing, just because I think it's easier to create the textures in a T-pose or in a symmetrical pose, right? So you can work symmetrically. But if your character doesn't have symmetry, it doesn't really matter. All right, so let me just show you the textures that I created in 3D Painter. I'm gonna select the head and I'm gonna scroll down to the texture map. I'm gonna click on on and you'll see this is the text stream. It's pretty, um, you know, pretty simple. I went for a, a stylized version of this character or like for the textures. So that's all. And all I did to uh, to display this in, in, inside ZBrush is to export the albedo maps from Substance 3D Painter and import them into the texture uh, right here. So I clicked on import and imported all the albedo textures. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of them. So I have a shortcut for that in my UI, uh, which you can see here. So it's literally the same thing as this, right? I'm gonna turn this on, I'm gonna select the body, turn this on, select the uh, body details and turn it on. So these are the textures that I created in Substance 3D Painter. Pretty simple, but again, I went for like more of a stylized <laughs> suit. Uh, it has a, a bunch of different patterns and details that I think they came through uh, nicely, uh, but it's mainly to give you an example of whatever you can do within ZBrush, uh, also with textures as well, and then the ability to send all of that into um, Character Creator 4 with literally one click. Once you have this, a character in a T pose or an A pose like this, um, you know, kind of like in a relaxed pose, uh, I have my textures, I have UVs. Again, UVs is quite important because uh, creating UVs on a pose characters could be a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> so I would recommend, uh, if you don't want to do the textures at this point, at least have the UVs before you move into the next one. So yeah, I have the four um, subtools and all I'm going to do is click on this button that says all. Now a little bit of um, uh, context of why I'm going to click on all. I have already installed Character Creator 4. Let me just show you what that looks like. And this is a, an empty scene. In fact, let me just go to File, New Project, just to show you that this is a clean slate. I wanna show you everything from the beginning. So I have already installed this and you realize that at the top here, I have an icon for um, ZBrush that is grayed out because currently, obviously, I don't have anything, but I can go back and forth between Character Creator 4 and ZBrush. Now, if I go back to ZBrush, I don't want to click on Gozi because if I click on Gozi, Siri is going to look at the software or the tools that I have connected to the Gozi in ZBrush and it's going to send the selected subtool. But I want to send everything. That's kind of like one of the keys of this process. I want to send the head, the hands, and all of that. And to do that, I just need to click on all. So if I click on all, I get this pop up. And if you have multiple 
applications, Zbrush might ask you where you want to send this character uh, into which software. So if you use um, Blender or Maya or whatever it is, right, um, you can connect it. But in my case, I only use uh, Character Creator 4 with Zbrush for this specific purpose. So all I want to do is click on All, click on Continue. Um, another <laughs> another thing to mention is you'll realize that all my subtools are in the high subdivision level. So uh, level four in this case for the suit details you don't have to go to the lowest of division level uh zbrush and character creator four like the go see is automatically going to send the lowest um subdivision level available in zbrush to character creator four so i'm going to click on continue and i'm going to let this do its magic and there we go so we have the go see options right here um i'm going to leave everything at default i found that the merge all props and the match cc model scale at 100 is the best way to go for this workflow uh, depending on your version of character creator 4 you might see slightly different um, options here but in my case this is what I found works um, really well and you only have in the actions you only have an option to create a prop and that's what we want because we have created the entire mesh in ZBrush and that's one of the key things to highlight about this process we did everything with DynaMesh we uh, use Siri Mesher to create our own topology in ZBrush and you know it's a completely new thing for Character Creator 4 we're not using any default base mesh or anything right we created everything from scratch so this way you know if we select uh, create prop um, character creator is going to interpret it as a just as a prop mesh uh, but don't worry we're gonna fix that in a second now another couple things that I'm going to highlight here is that you can update or import the mesh with the textures or you can import just the mesh or just the textures. I'm going to leave it as default again uh, because I have the textures that I imported, you know, just the, the albedo. Uh, if you don't want to import a particular one, let's say if I don't want to import the head, I can just turn it off here or I can change the uh, the resolution of the textures that I'm importing from ZBrush into Character Creator 4. But again, I just wanted to walk you through this. Again, it's just the default settings. So I'm going to click on Update. And there we go, we have our character inside CC4, which is pretty cool, and we have the textures. Um, now, there needs to be a tiny little bit of tweaking. I'm just going to show you why and, and how to do it. Uh, and this is something only relevant to those of you who want to have the textures or display the textures that you've created in Substance 3 Painter or in any other application, uh, Photoshop, Blender, whatever it is, into uh, CC4, right? So this is not exclusive to Substance 3 Painter, by the way. I just like to work my textures in that particular software and set of tools, but it could be anything, right? It's just a set of texture maps. So a couple of things to highlight. So on the left-hand side, I have my scene where you can see I have my four subtools from ZBrush. They came through very nicely and you know I can turn them all off. So I have the head, I have the hands, I have the suit and the suit details, right? So all of that works uh, really nicely, but uh, there's a few things with textures that don't look right. And, and that is because of the way that ZBrush works and the way that I have set everything up. So um, I'm gonna start with the head just to show you the process. Again, this is not relevant. Those of you who want to pose or rig a character is only for those of you who are interested in also having the textures as you do this process. So I'm gonna click on the head and on the modify panel on the right hand side, I'm gonna remove it just to show you where that is. I'm gonna go to window and modify just in case you don't see it. And I'm gonna go to this texture or material window, right? And in this section, I have the shader type set to PBR. And within the PBR, I have my base color, right? That came with, um, from ZBrush because I had that already uh, attached to the mesh, um, but it looks a little bit weird, right? And that is due to the bomb map or the normal map. And I also have metallic and roughness. So in a separate window, I have my maps that I can just click and drag. So because these are outside of this window, uh, you won't see it, but I'm literally just gonna click and drag them into um, these slots right here. So I'm gonna start with the normal map. So I'm gonna drag that in the bump. And as soon as I do that, CC4 is going to ask me if this is a bump or a normal. So this is obviously a normal map. I'm going to click OK. And these are the textures that I imported, or sorry, that I exported from uh, Substance 3D Painter. Now, the first thing that you'll notice, and this is why I wanted to show you this process, is that when you import your textures from um, Substance Painter, you might see these weird artifacts. And that is just because there is a mismatch of the uh, UVs with what we have in here. And that is because as well, uh, ZBrush likes to work with the inverter or the mirrored version of the maps, but that's a really easy fix. Once you import your normal, you can select it here and you can see it's highlighted with green and that indicates that that's the one selected. And you can scroll down a bit 
can open up these UV settings if they're closed up. And in this button, you can flip it uh, or just mirror it vertically. So I'm going to click on that and you'll see it, that fixes that issue, but it still doesn't look quite right. Um, and that is because also the green channel or the white channel is inverted. So I'm going to select it again or just make sure that it's selected. And in here, I'm going to flip normal Y. So I'm going to click on that and that looks a lot better. So you see that's a slight different, but that sort of like sharpens those things. Um, all right, so I'm also going to bring in um, the roughness of the head and I'll show you why. So pay attention to the highlights of the eyes. So I'm going to bring another map, drop it in there, and that is the roughness of the head. But because it works in the same way as the normal map, probably you won't see there's a little bit of mismatch in this area. But I'm going to select that and I'm going to flip it. And there we go. So now we have. The, the nice reflection of the eyes and the rest is working fine. Now, there is no metallic or anything in the head, so I'm just going to leave this as it is, and that's about it. So that's how you import textures from a separate software into Character Creator 4 um, and have them displayed nicely with the PBR workflow. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video right here while I go through the process of adding the rest of the you know normal roughness and all of that to the body onto the suit and I'll be back in a second. All right, so I just went ahead and imported all the textures. So now you can see, uh, for instance, in the suit, we have some of those, um, you know, paneling, nice, you know, details and <laughs> indentations just uh, to make it look good. Um, I just realized that in the suit details right here, I haven't flipped the metallic one. There we go. Um, if you look at this area right here, this is how it was. So it was there was a mismatch of the metallic sections of the hard surface modeling. So I'm just going to flip that again. Uh, so yeah, just be careful about that, that whatever you import, you have to flip it. If you have I mean, occlusion or displacement, glow, um, you know, blend, opacity, anything, uh, just make sure that they follow the same process. So all of them should be consistent, as in flip all of them with V. Um, because that's the model that we brought from Zerush. So now we can start with the fun part and, and literally just rig the character really easily within CC4. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice as well as I rotate is that the shadow, the cast shadow, is coming from almost the ankles of this character, right? I don't know if you can see that. That's not a big deal. Once we start with the process of uh, rigging, that should be uh, automatically fixed. So what I'm going to do at this point is uh, save this file, and you can do that by going to File, save project as and that way we can start with this sort of like clean slate and if there is something wrong or you know for whatever reason it crashes i like to have this file saved and i can just come back and start over uh, and i don't have to reconnect all the textures and all of that all right so i have gone through the process of saving that uh, uh, already and all we have to do now that we are ready to go is go to the content or the scene sorry select our character um you can select it from the top uh, kind of like from the hierarchy, from the top hierarchy, or select them all together, right? Um, it doesn't really matter. So just to be sure that I'm selecting everything, I'm just going to use the all method of selecting everything. But in recent versions of Character Creator 4, you can just click on the head or the root, and it will select everything, just in case, the four subtools. And you'll see it has this Accurig. So I'm going to click on Accurig in the Modify tab, and you'll see it just sort of shifted things um, a little bit to the top. Uh, that's kind of like what I mentioned about automatically fixing the floor. And that's it. Like We have now our character ready for rigging. So in the right hand side in the modify tab, this is all we need to kind of like follow. And you see most things are grayed out. And this, I think, is, is a very good way of working because it sort of restricts you to the tools that you need to use at a specific uh, stage. So a couple of things that I want to mention. If you want to have, let's say, a character that has a sword or... Um, I don't know, like a stick or something, like a weapon, whatever, right? Something extra, an, an additional prop that is not necessarily part of the rig that you want to be able to attach or detach, uh, maybe a backpack or something like that. Um, you can actually rig everything together and ignore that type of prop. And that is done with selected mesh. So just to cover that odd case, if you want to have, again, let's say that as a spear, right? Or something like that. You will have it in here. All you have to do is select everything but the spear, assuming that that will be this, let's say, right? <laughs> uh, uh, ignore the suit. And you can click on selected meshes, and that way you can go through the process of rigging everything but the spear, and then you can attach it as a prop after. But in my case, you know, everything is, you know, is good to go. So I can select everything and select meshes, the same thing, or just click on all meshes, same thing. Um, so yeah, let's just 
on select things. I'm going to click make sure that all meshes are selected and click on create guides. And character creator is going to essentially build um, these points that, um, that represent the joints of the rig and we just need to place them. Now, there are a couple of things that are pretty cool about this process that I'm going to cover really quickly, uh, which are the midpoint placement, uh, the symmetry selection, and that you can flip or um, yeah, mirror whatever you do on one side to the other with these two tools. You can also click on this button right here to mirror a specific joint rather than the whole uh, symmetric side, so like the green to the blue. You can also click on the bone list right here and see all the bones that are generated. Um, you can ignore this for now, but these ones will be uh, useful later on if you want to fine tune this, uh, but that will be for another video. I'm also going to click on these uh, settings for the joints and then you can change the size just to make it easier for you uh, and the opacity as well. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. I think that's fine, um, but you know, you have the ability to, to fine tune maybe smaller than that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now, this did a pretty good job recognizing the kind of like humanoid shape. Um, all I'm going to do is adjust some of the placement, but it's going to be pretty minor. So I'm going to select this one right here and I'm going to show you something. So the midpoint placement is going to um, analyze the mesh and try to place it within the midpoint of the volume, right? So if I move this, let's say around there, which is not the correct placement, um, CC4 is going to analyze this sort of tubular shape of the arm and place that right in there, right? So if I try to move this way, for whatever reason, and I rotate around, it's going to be placed in a weird position. So if you struggle to sort of like move things around and try to place this in the right place, like I just did there, um, that is because of the midpoint. So I'm going to click on midpoint, just place it in there, because I think that's kind of okay. Uh, turn that off the midpoint placement, and that allows you to sort of like fine tune the shoulder. So I'm going to go for something there. And you can see here at the top right, I have a reference of where this point should be. So it's right there because there is also the clavicle, which is this one. So I'm just going to place it in there. Um, and the symmetry selection just allows you to sort of, you know, play with one side and it will be mirrored to the other. So I'm going to select the clavicle and the clavicle is going to be a bit lower than that, something like this. Let's select the next one, the placement of the base neck. Uh, so I'm going to push this forward. And this is something that you could have not done with the midpoint placement because, again, it's going to try to maintain a consistent distance. Uh, but in this case, I think that works fine. This one is the neck tip or the beginning of the, of the head, I think, a bit forward. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to fine tune this, uh, but you can go back and forth until you get something that works. For the elbow, I think I'm just going to push this up a bit just to align it with this section right here so that's that's fine um i'm gonna leave the wrist to the end uh just because i want to show you something that's really important the hips though they can be a little bit lower and this is another reason why i went for a more kind of like stylized character because i want to show you that you know even though this has a humanoid form you can play with the proportions and the and the placement of let's say the joints and that will change things quite a bit so let's assume that the belly button is just above there, right around here. And let's place this one a, lot, a little bit lower, like so. So I think that's fine. Uh, let's move these ones to the knees, which is more about there. All right. And the same thing for the ankles, which I think they are in the right place anyway. Yeah, that looks good. And this one as well. Let's select. These are kind of like the toes. Uh, and you get this reference anyway. Uh, so you can just compare it to where it should be roughly placed if it was um, a human character. So I think this is all right. Let's push it a bit further. Now, the only one that I left for the end is the wrist. The placement of the wrist is super important because that's the one that is going to um, determine the placement of the joints for the fingers. And that's going to be really handy. If you set this up and it works you know, from the beginning is going to be really, really useful. And I just realized that I also have the UVs um, are wrong in here. I'll just fix that after. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I just need to place this in the right spot. And the best thing I would say is to place it within that sort of like end of the sleeve. I think that covers what the wrist would be. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. If it doesn't work, you can just come back and do it. But placing this in the right place 
will um, will save a lot of time when you get to place the the fingers. Hopefully, um, I'll show you what I mean in, in a second. Hopefully, that would work. Uh, but that's it. I mean, <laughs> this is pretty easy. It just took a little bit longer than usual, just because I wanted to place everything in the right spot. Uh, and I just look at the leg, and I just think this might be a little bit lower than that. I think I just went a little bit crazy with the with the placement. It's something around there. Um, so yeah, you can just place these wherever you want. And once I've created the guides, I'm just gonna tell CC4 how many fingers I have. This is another reason I created a character with only three fingers and a thumb, so four. So I'm just gonna change these from five to four. So that's uh, three fingers and the thumb, so four fingers in each hand all together. And that's it, I'm gonna click on uh, Generate Skeleton. And there we go. CC4 went ahead and used those points to create the skeleton. Um, that's pretty easy. And as you can see, now we have these points for the hands, which is, if you follow this um, modify tab from the top to bottom, is the next step, right? We will have to bind the skin. But before we do that, we need to place these points. And I think for the most part, it did a pretty decent job. If it is a little bit crazy, the placement of these things, uh, that is due to the placement of the wrist. So you can just go back and do it, right? So you can just undo and place this uh, properly, right? Uh, but I think it did a pretty good job, right? Remember, this is a made up topology. So it's pretty amazing that it automatically try to place this in the right, um, in the right place. So what I'll do is I'm gonna select this one and you'll notice this is at the kind of like at the root of the thumb so this is the one that is not placed um, correctly so it should be somewhere around there so I'm gonna try to place this right and so that you don't have to be here for ages I'm just going to uh, speed this up and go into the next section so let me just do the thumb uh, but yeah it's pretty self-explanatory to be honest once you get to the kind of like the placement of the fingers I found that the midpoint is actually pretty handy so I'm just going to Try to place this in here, following this uh, reference here on the hand. This one has an additional control, so I'm going to press the um, W to access this tool right here at the top, just to place it first, and then go back to the rotation, and then I'm going to align this nicely. Yeah, I think it did a pretty good job anyway. So let's do the same thing. This is at the tip of the thumb. Excellent. So what I'll do is I'm going to pause this right here. I'm going to do the other fingers, and I'll be back in a second. All right, so that is pretty much it. So I went ahead and just placed this in a better position. So I think that looks um, that looks all right. Uh, you also have these things that I forgot to mention, which are for the camera, um, like a quick camera movement. So if I click on this one, it will fit the entire character. If I click on this hand, it will fit kind of like the top view almost of the uh, right hand side. Uh, the left one as well and you see the left one or the left hand is also nicely placed because I had the symmetry selection so I pretty much did everything in only one hand and it automatically mirrored as I placed in the other side all right so that is about it <laughs> really so um, before I go ahead and click on bind skin uh, I just want to reiterate a little bit of the process so we can do kind of like a quick recap of the process so far which I think it's important to do <laughs> at this stage all right, just to quickly recap again, uh, from ZBrush, I had my character with high subdivision levels, UVs, and a low subdivision level of each one of my subtools. I have merged them all together, created UVs and the textures that I created in uh, Substance 3D Painter. I imported the albedo into ZBrush so that I can display it in here. And once I have everything ready, I clicked on all, right? So all of the, the rest of the stuff I covered in previous videos, uh, except of the textures because it's not really part of the scope of this tutorial, but I uh, just wanted to, to show you that you can do textures anyway. Um, anyway, you can take all your subtools, click on all, send them to CC4 as props, um, select everything in the uh, in the scene tab, click on Accurig in the modified window, and then just select all meshes in this case, create the guides, place those dots, um, generate the skeleton with the right amount of fingers, in this case, four fingers all together, and place them, and that is it, right? So uh, it's a pretty simple process, and now I can click on bind skin, and CC4 is going to the process of um, literally creating or, or binding that mesh that we created in ZBrush, that's really important to highlight. It's a completely made up set of points and made up geometry, made up um, <laughs> the topology, right? So we created all of that in ZBrush, sent it to um, Character Creator 4, and with a quick set of placing some dots, right, we get a rig that we can use to pose and animate our character. And that's it. 
This is the completed rig. The fact that we have the fingers with the dots uh, doesn't mean anything right now. The only thing that will tell you that it is created is the color. So the green, the orange, and the blue. That's just for the uh, for the skeleton. All right, so I'm going to click on check animation to see what we get straight out of the box. Click on check animation. And then once we do that, at the bottom, if you don't see this animation player here, uh, you can go to window and click on animation player or F9. You might have, again, depending on the version or the packs that you have in CC4, you might have something different from me. But I'm just going to click on motion and this drop down. And I'm going to select a body rig or actually let's go for a male. Um, let's go for male walk. If I click on that, we can play it. And this is pretty exciting. Right, we can rotate around and see how our character is being moved in this um, in this software. So this is really exciting for me because uh, you know it just literally takes a few minutes to uh, play some dots, rig the character, and again I haven't tweaked anything of the rig. That's something that we're gonna do. Uh, just we're gonna fine tune things in the next video. But just straight out of the box, like I said in a pretty default set of settings without doing too much, we have a pretty decent result, right? Um, obviously, you might change things depending on your character. I quite like the low uh, center of gravity of this guy, uh, but you might think, you know, maybe push the, the hips up a little bit will work better. Uh, but I think, I don't know, I, I kind of like like the the fact that this guy has like very, very short ties and long legs, uh, but it, this is the type of things that you can fix uh, relatively easier um, later. Now, if you want to do that, if you want to reset certain things, you can just undo everything and then rebind the skin. But I think, again, it did a pretty decent job with the default settings. So what I'm going to do is um, leave this video here. And in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and cover some of the other cool things that you can do with CC4 once you have your rig. So we're going to fine tune things like um, the rotation here and the deformation of this uh, neck piece. You see this is meant to be a hard surface object. And you see that this is the firm deforming. So uh, we're going to fix that as well. Um, and I think for the most part, that's pretty much all I need to fix really, but I'm going to show you how to fix uh, a few other things. All right. Uh, if you want to check things in a different way, you can literally go to body rig and go, um, you know, full body and, and the character is going to do some nice stretching like this. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to play it just to, to show you. So this is what I want to avoid. So that's a pretty good example of what I want to show you in the next video. So uh, when the character moves the head, I don't want this hard surface area to move with it. I want this to remain as a hard surface prop, right? Um, and that's something that's going to be really easy. The rest, I think, work um, pretty well. And I'm going to show you a set of tricks to um, update that. Um, all right. So again, I'm going to leave this video here. And in the next one, we're going to fine tune this rig. And then we're going to start sending poses and, you know, manage our poses in ZBrush so that we can, um, you know, refine them further if we want to. Like if we want to continue sculpting or anything like that, we can totally do that. And I'm going to show you the uh, the pose manager plugin inside ZBrush from Character Creator 4, which is pretty cool. All right. So I'll see you in the next video.